So let's suppose that one 5 kilogram box is hanging by a massless cord from another 5 kilogram box also hanging by a second massless cord. So here we have the diagram. Box number one that has a mass of 5 kilograms is attached to uh, the second box with a mass of 5 kilograms by the following rope, so massless rope. At the same time, this box, box number two, is being held by second massless cord, by second massless rope. Now, in part A, if the boxes are at rest, find the tension in each cord, and part B, if the two boxes are pulled upward with an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared, find the tensions in both of the cords. So let's begin with part A. So first we want to find what the tension in this rope is, and then we want to find what the tension in the second rope is. So let's begin with this rope. So in order to find the tension in this rope, we must find all the forces acting on this object box number one. So because our box number one is stationary, that means the sum of all the forces acting along our x-axis must be zero. So let's sum up all the forces acting on box number one. So let's choose going up along the y-axis to be positive, going downward to be negative. Now, what is pulling down on our box number one? Well, it's the force of gravity given by the red vector. So m times g, where m is the mass of our box number one. But what is holding our box up? Well, it's the force in the tension. And let's call this force, force subscript T1. So, the sum of all the forces is equal to the positive force minus of the negative force. So we have force tension 1 minus the force of gravity equals 0 because they're not moving. So we bring this force to this side. We see that the, fourth, uh, the force or the tension in rope 1 is equal to force, which is equal to mass times g. So 5.0 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared gives us 49 newtons. So the force in this rope, in the rope number one, is 49 newtons. What about rope number two? Well, if we're looking at only this rope, then we can treat everything below that rope as one system, as one object. So now we're dealing with not only this object, but these two objects combined. So box one plus box two. So, something is pulling on this system down, and this is the force of gravity. But now, the force of gravity has not mass, but two mass. Two times the mass because we're dealing with two objects that have the same exact mass. And now, the force that's pulling upward is force, or the tension in rope number two. Let's call it force tension two. So, once again, we take the sum of all the vectors acting along our y-axis and we set that equal to zero because our object is not moving. So, once again, the force that points upward is positive. The force that points downward is negative. So, we add them up, set them equal to zero. We rearrange and we find that the tension in rope number two is equal to two times m times g. So 2 times 5 is 10 times 9.8 is 98 newtons. So we find that the tension in rope number 2 is 98 newtons and the tension in rope number 1 is 49 newtons. Now let's go to part B. Now let's suppose our objects, our two boxes, are being pulled upward with an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. Now let's find the new tensions in rope 1 and rope 2. So once again, the same exact procedure, except now we're no longer setting them equal to zero, but we're setting them equal to mass times acceleration, where our acceleration is 1.50 meters per second squared. So here we have our box number 1. Our box number one is traveling upward with some acceleration given here is 1.5 meters per second squared. We know, at the, we know the force going downward is the force of gravity, so force equals m times g. And the force that is pulling up is the force 
in the rope. It's the tension in rope number one. Let's call it FT1. So once again, we sum up all the forces along the y-axis. So we get the sum is equal to force T1 minus force of gravity equals M times A. So we're looking what the we're looking for the tension in a rope, so we rearrange our equation and solve for the tension. So our tension in rope 1 is equal to mass times G, mass of box 1 times G plus mass of box 1 times A, our acceleration of box 1. So we plug in our values and we get our tension in rope number 1 is equivalent to 56.5 newtons. What about box number two, or actually what about rope number two? Well, once again, we're treating as everything below rope number two to be one object, one system. So the mass of that system is simply the combination of these two masses. So box one plus box two. What is pulling it downward? Once again, it's the force of gravity. Now we have two times the mass. What's pulling it upward? Well, the tension in our rope number two. And our system is moving upward with an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. So once again, we add up all the vectors along the y-axis and, e and equate it to mass times A, where mass is the mass of two boxes. So we rearrange and we set our equation equal to the tension in rope number two. So that equals to mass times A plus FG. So mass is simply two times five times our acceleration 1.5 plus, well, our new force of gravity is two times the previous one because we're incorporating both masses. So two times five times 9.8. And we get that our force in rope number two is 113 newtons. So when both objects are accelerating upward, the tension in both ropes increases compared to the tension in the ropes when our objects are stationary, when the acceleration is zero.